Hey there, Stubbies. This is Dick with The Ticket Stub. Uh, this is episode 120. And just to remind you guys, this Sunday is going to be the Oscars. So we're doing our Oscar ballot this episode, and we want you guys to join in. Uh, we're going to be posting a ballot from Rotten Tomatoes. You can use or you can really use any ballot. And we want you to fill it out and send it to us and on a direct message or any way. You want to email us to take a sub at gmail, take a sub podcast at gmail.com. You know, how to, you know how to contact us. Just send us your uh, ballot and pick your what you think your movies are going to be. And then we're going to give two tickets to The Grand or Amstar. That's any theater that Amstar or The Grand is located uh, to the winner who gets the closest. And then on next Thursday's show, we will be going over the results to see which of the three of us win the Golden Dude. And of course, we'll give you a shout out if you are one of the if you're the winner. Uh, today's show is a lot of fun. We reviewed some great movies. We look forward to the Oscars this Sunday and seeing you guys on Thursday. Hey, this is Low with Soul Harbor, and you are listening to Lone Star Community Radio on 104.5 KCZWLP Conroe and 106.1 KZCCLP Conroe. And worldwide on IRLoneStar.com. Hello and welcome. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to the ticket stuff. We're having a little bit of a technical oh. problem here. The Ticket Stub is brought to you by uh, the Grand Theater and Amstar Cinemas. We broadcast most every Thursday from beautiful downtown Conroe, Hello. Texas. Can we hear you now? What's up, party people? All right. Yeah, you I'm, take I'm your, on. You I'm take on. I'm on. Oh, no, Chris, you're doing great. You just go ahead. Well, I didn't have it memorized. <laughs> Everybody, we come from Conroe, Texas on Thursdays, most of the time. Actually, are we even on Thursdays anymore? I need to update that. Today is Thursday. Today yeah, is sir. Thursday. What's wrong with me? My <laughs> microphone doesn't work, and now I lose my mind. Uh, if you're listening on the radio in the local Conroe area, it's 104.5 and 106.1. Otherwise, you're watching us on YouTube Live, Facebook Live, uh, or Facebook Video, I guess, would it be called? All podcast platforms. You can follow us on Twitter and Facebook. We have a ticket sponsorship with the Grand Theater and Amstar Cinema. You can visit IRLoneStar.com for information about the show and sponsorships or you can give us a call 936-647-3776 you know it's been a while since we've had a call why didn't somebody give us a call somebody right now at least you a cr- at least a crank call at least a crank call why is it a crank call i, I get prank is it just because prank and crank rhyme i don't know crank. yanking your crank <laughs> is that it's probably because the that's crank what the joke is right well yeah but did that show where did that show get the name from that's probably where they got the show from like they made it up so prank, and then they just said crank. And yeah, it I, works. I think crank predates Crank Yankers, that puppet show. I think it does. Which, by the way, is a really pretty funny. Uh, anyways, my name's Connor. One of the hosts of the show. My mic was a little bit. I I, I messed it up. It's not Dick's fault. I plugged. He something comes in, in here and just starts hitting everything. Brute force. Yeah, I kind of uh, you know I don't have any regard for other people's property or possessions, so I just wreck them. Uh, but anyways, joined in the studio as always by Chris Appel. How you doing, sir? Doing well. Doing well. Life is good. Chris is the GM of the theater here in Conroe. Uh, life at the theater, okay? Yeah, it's going well, going well for us. Excited about Birds of Prey coming hey, out oh. tonight, actually. So Ka-caw, you can Ka-caw. still get your tickets. We've got uh, quite a few auditoriums going of it. It's so. Just a movie about some old birds. Am I right? Yep. Am I right, guys? The old birds from England. Dick, how you doing, man? Doing good. Yeah. What's going on here, Stu? The Stu? Yeah, studio's up. Everything's good to go. I hopefully we will start producing more content in the back for the ticket sub. <laughs> That but, funny, which, actually. which I want to remind folks, we do have a YouTube channel, uh, the Ticket Step Podcast. So make sure to subscribe to that because that's where we're going to be posting a lot of the background stuff because oh. we're, we we won't be able to put it on the radio. So you so. couldn't hear me at first, but if you wanted to watch me frantically try to talk into the microphone, you can only do that on the YouTube channel. And <laughs> no, I didn't have you up. Okay, what the heck? I'm trying to do quality control here. I know, but people want to see. People want to peel the onion back and see how the sausage is made. So it just looked like I was doing a terrible intro then. (laughs) So nobody saw any of that. It was just me being terrible. The quality control is make Chris look terrible. Make me look still decent and Chris terrible. You can see Chris at the Grand Theater in Conrad. (laughs) Yeah, in fact, if you want to see Chris, just show up to the box office and and start uh, complaining. What's that watch channel call again? Ooh, uh, yeah. Well, you can talk about it. It's fine. Watch me go. Watch broke. Watch me go broke. Chris yes, has a on YouTube. He has a YouTube channel where all he does is talk about watches. Yeah. And people are subscribing and liking. There's are they are they smashing the subscribe button or are they just kind of tapping it? <laughs> Sma- well, well, it doesn't matter if they smash it. If they tap it. It <laughs> well, counts. That's how so. the youth. That's how the youth say things nowadays. You should add that to your smashing. Channel. I yeah. Think, or I you think could that's say like, ob- obliterate that subscribe button. You know, you could say that. <laughs> pulverize that subscribe button. 
uh, lamb based it. <laughs> lamb, ba- yeah, that's how the somebody who had a watch channel would probably say lamb based yes, it. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so, anyways, wa- watch him go broke. <laughs> well, we here talk about movies, and we uh, sometimes get off topic, like we just did. We got a good show today. We're gonna do some movie news. I'm excited. We're gonna. We, a lot of times we do a box office talk, but the box office is a little bit. Well, we already talked about Birds of Prey last week. And I was going to try to talk about one of the other movies coming out, but I just couldn't bring myself to care at all. I mean... Uh, the, Gretel and Hansel? Or no, H- that's H- already out, right? That, that came out, out last week, Hey, right? Sonic the Hedgehog? You can't. Is that, that this came week? Out? That's next week. Well, yeah, that's next week. That's oh, not okay. this week. You're saving that one, then. Well, I guess. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Although that one actually looks pretty good, Sonic the Hedgehog. Really? Uh, maybe not. <laughs> I'll say that I thought it looked I thought it looked good like the like the way they are integrating Sonic and I mean like the actual look of the the movie you know what I'm saying like the CGI or whatever. no 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 it's very it reminds me of Inspector Gadget the one with from Matthew, with Matthew Broderick Matthew Broderick yeah it really looks like that to me oh okay well Chris is a hater are you an anti Sonic guy what's your problem no I'm not I'm it's an interesting uh, way that they chose to do it. Okay. All right. well, what's interesting to me about those kind of movies, especially like the Detective Pikachu and all that kind of stuff, the video games, is they're not doing any of the of the storylines that are originally from the game. Which Sonic didn't really. I mean, he had like two objectives: save the little robot animals and Get then the defeat Doctor Robotnik. But so, but like this movie, it looked like they're trying to combine a little bit of that, but like not enough to where the fan, true fans of Sonic will be like, "Oh, this is so great." But then again, the story of Sonic's not like an epic tale. Not a whole lot of story, is there? Like yeah. when you said the story of Sonic, I was no. kind of confused for a minute because well, like Pikachu, I, I saw Detective Pikachu, and it was really interesting to me how they they created a world that if you played Pokemon, you can see that world existing. Yeah, and so, but it wasn't based off of a game. Like that storyline was not based off of Pokemon Red or Blue. Yeah, so. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, they kind of went with it, and they created its own world, but they used kind of the background of what we've experienced in the games to give it some structure. What what part of a role do you think rings will play in the Zero. Song? You think zero? Zero. There's no chance oh, there's a 0% to. rings. There's got to be something with rings. I didn't see any rings in the trailer. That would have been the first thing I well, would have started. Well, they just to show you his teeth. Yeah. And then the second trailer <laughs> was just so all about him not having the teeth. <laughs> So, so they have that. They time I didn't to see put knuckles. The I didn't see tails. So uh, I have no idea flew. where they're trying to go Which, with this. Did tails fly? Who flew? Tails. tails. Knuckles climbed. Oh, gotcha. And like shadows not in it. So Man, you're deep. We you're, don't know that. Does he have teeth? I mean, you're they, you're they, deep I in know. all the nerd stuff. Dick. I, always, I, I Sonic was my Mario. I didn't have a uh, NES. Yeah, you had a Sega. So I, I had a Sega. So I did like the, my platformer was Sonic. And my basic my biggest exposure to Sonic was I had a. Uh, I had a Sega Game Gear. Which oh, was yeah, that came with Sonic? Yeah, it came with Sonic. It also required eight AA batteries and would last for about two to three hours of gameplay. And wow, they gave you that janky done. DC cord. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So you had to be like four feet from the wall. So I, it would die, and then I wouldn't play it for like three months. My parents wouldn't buy me batteries again for like three months because, you know, eight AA batteries is like five bucks, right? And my parents hated me and didn't want to spend the money on uh, on my joy. Plus, you couldn't save anything. That's yeah. why I think those hardcore speedrunners, they should play the old games because there's no save. It's like you literally have Sonic. You're going all the way through the game. If you die, you die. What's a speedrunner? They, like, try to beat games really fast and see if they can, uh, like, beat. Man. They do, like, serious games, too. Like, they did, like, Zelda Orkney of Time. Yeah. You know how long that game it's is? It's a long game. Yeah. And they're like, oh, I'm going to speedrun. I'm like, I would not want to spend 40 hours doing that or probably shorter than People that. People have too much time. I, I guess are they trying? Maybe it's like their Twitch or something. I don't know. Yeah, something they st- live stream it and they try to beat other. There's a whole scoreboard online, like how you can get the highest score or speed score. I actually watched that yesterday. Oddly, uh, it was a guy that was playing a, a Halloween game, a Michael Myers yeah. game, and trying to beat it fast or just trying to. No, beat just just playing it. And I was I just watched it. He just watched his Twitch. Yeah, I, I have not gotten into Twitch. I don't understand that. Um, I don't, I, I, this is the first time I did it. So well, I will I'm never do it again. I was thinking about this because I've seen a couple like fight companion kind of uh, Twitches where they watch UFC or boxing. Yeah. And they have buddies and they talk about it. Yeah. While it's going on, but I think the ro- the right stuff really restricts like people talking about movies and watching movies. Well, and, see, that's my idea for, and we're totally off topic here, but that's my idea for. Uh, Sports like I like I've talked to I, I thought me and some friends like especially the Rockets we're big basketball fans mm-hmm. big Rockets fans like Twitch would be the probably the best way to do it but if you, one of the worst parts of watching sports a lot of times is listening listening to the announcers because a lot of times they're just either terrible or you always feel like they hate your team especially if it's a national broadcast and they're not like 
you know. So I don't know. You've been watching Joe Buck too much. Yeah, that? well, Joe Buck is That's kind of a tool. Is. Yeah, he's he's kind of a massive tool. All right, well, let's do some news. We do have some movie news. Speaking of Birds of Prey, CinemaBlend.com said that the Birds of Prey reviews are in. See what the critics are saying. No, I was surprised. That's not a good thing. No, I was surprised as I was reading the reviews. They're like all pretty good. Yeah, it's got good reviews. It's like ninety percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, you know, the reviews are saying things about how, uh, you know, one, one said that it seems like the, the Harley Quinn was going to really be the main focus, but they were surprised in a positive way about how it really focused on a lot of the different girls and how it was actually like well-made and well put together. Uh, you know, it's, it's girl powered, earnestly feminist superhero movie with big and plausible action scenes. But it, Anyways, uh, talking about how it, it's fantabulous in its own way, which isn't a real word, by Do the way. Do you think this is going to capture the audience that uh, the new reboot Charlie's Angels tried to? Because the, they failed. The newest one? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah say, they uh, failed. I don't think that they did capture the audience. Well, no, they, they wanted to capture a certain kind of audience, and they, they clearly failed on capturing that audience. So I think this has a better chance than that movie ever yeah. did. I mean, that was like dead on arrival, it felt like to me. Mm-hmm. But I was surprised to see, I mean, I'm just, you know, you read the article, go to cinemablend.com, uh, sponsor with, no, just kidding. Uh, but you can read uh, all the things they're saying. And, uh, I mean, it's like one review after review of positive stuff that people are saying about this movie. Who would have thunk? Chris, are you surprised? Really? I, yeah, I am, because it's DC. Yeah. And oh, they've on. they've struggled. Well, they've struggled. They, well, they've, what's, what's they the, haven't struggled. They've done well at the box office. Yeah, but it's so not, people, 90% yeah, Rotten right. Tomatoes. Well, though. people go see the movies. So This was a but we're talking long about, shot. We're, we're, talking about critical, we're talking about critical acclaim here, not financial oh, okay. success. This was a big long shot to work, in my opinion. So the jury's still out to see if it will. It looks like it will, though, so... Good for them. At least, you know, I mean, who knows? Uh, they all, like Dick said, they all make money, so I don't think that's the question. But will this be viewed as a good movie? I th- and I think DC, for their legacy, they desperately, desperately need something to be a big hit. And so hopefully this one will work. Definitely. Because honestly, all the, DC might be in a decent spot because Marvel, I think, is at kind of a weird crossroads right now where they're putting. Like uh, like what's well, the, they had their big finish. Well, they had their big finish, but they're still making movies that have happened like before the big finish. And then I just saw like all the TV shows they're going to be coming out with in the next little bit, and Wandavision and stuff. I mean, and they're digging deep for stuff, in my opinion, right now that people don't even really know about. Uh, but DC has a chance where they haven't really struck gold with the IP that they've got yet, at least not in a while. It's been a good good period of time since then, and so maybe people are looking for tentpole superhero movies, and maybe they'll. Well, they have two major DC movies come out. They have, or this year is this movie that's coming out, Birds of Prey, and then they have the new uh, Wonder Woman. Yeah. Uh, so they and have the Wonder that Wo- coming out. Wonder Woman's like the best of the franchise. Yeah. Yeah. So that might be good little mo. Which is funny a because momentum. It, what's interesting to me about that is they haven't really. You would think it'd be Superman or Batman. They can't do those well. I don't but, understand. Yeah. So they're not gonna. I mean, I think that's really what they're gonna try to gauge with Birds of Prey is who's gonna be our leaders in the sh- in this IP for movies. Not TV shows or anything, but for IPs. And if this does well, they still have Aquaman that did that was well received and did well. But I don't really know what they're gonna do with that. They're not. They haven't really announced a sequel or anything. Which why does he just go by Waterman, right? Aquaman. Because I think it was made. Waterman. It was yeah. created like in the '40s, so that was the the key term for water back then. Aqua. 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 H2O Avenger. Agua Man. What do they call it in, in like Mexico? Agua. Agua Man. <laughs> It just doesn't sound as powerful, right? Superman sounds powerful. Waterman, yeah. yeah. Waterman. Yeah. Well, there's like, Ant Man. I mean, Ant Man is literally just an you know. Well, he sounds very limited. That, yeah. Well, that's true. Waterman. Well, he is pretty limited. Okay. Uh, Yahoo.com. Actually, the finance side of Yahoo.com has an article about how Disney and Disney Plus, with their new streaming platform, has spent seventy-five million dollars uh, for the rights to make a Hamilton musical. Hamilton the musical. So Hamilton, for anybody who's been asleep under a rock somewhere or in the Waterman with Waterman down at the depths, is one of the most popular Broadway plays of maybe ever. I don't know. Definitely in recent history. Definitely. Uh, almost impossible to get tickets to it unless you're like a rich person. I mean, you know, very exclusive. So I guess they're gonna just take that and turn it into a you know kind of one of these stage like musicals. Like cats. Hopefully, just like cats. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, identical to cats. Seventy-five million dollars. Does that seem like a lot? No, no. it doesn't. Uh, no, 
no, no, not for this. This that's w- not even to make it. That's just to get the rights to it, yeah. right? So they still have to like pay actors and stuff. They sure do. This will oh. work. Y'all are being very casual with the seventy-five what? million dollar thing. Well, they, if you own the rights to that, you can do a lot of things with it, like Hamilton action figures and stuff. Well, you could do you, you, you can do Hamilton movies. Hey, they should do that. You actually. can do TV shows. <laughs> I mean, I don't know why you'd ever. Is want there to like do an that. Aaron Burr slapping, uh, slapping act? Isn't he the one who didn't he slap somebody or throw a cane at somebody or something? No, he shot. Oh, he shot Alexander him. Ham- yes. Or did Hamilton shoot him? No, I think he shot Alexander Hamilton. Okay, well, there we go. This so- is why we need Hamilton, so we know what's coming <laughs> Right. I haven't, I haven't seen it. I just studied it in, like, ninth grade, and I've forgotten most of it. So, Well, this, this is going to work because it's modern. Now, with Cats, not modern. Came out in the 80s. It turned out to be extremely weird. Should never have been made into it's a movie. It's still successful on Broadway, though. With, well... Okay, but not as a movie, for sure, obviously. Well, and they like did it super creepy. Super creepy because super it, duper I mean, creepy. what are you, you going to do with that? And, you know, other ones, Phantom of the Opera, terrible adaptation into a film. Les Miserables, they really missed the mark with it, but this is modern. So what are you I, about? I think Les it's going to work. like won Oscars. Don't, don't call it Les not, Miserables. Not Les Mizzy. Not the but the movie, <laughs> the movie sucks <laughs> in comparison. Did they get a couple Oscars? To the play. Uh, probably. I don't know. They just hand those out nowadays, though. Well, <laughs> they keep casting people that are like tone deaf. This is rap. You don't need any talent at all to Whoa! rap. Whoa! You don't. Shot Hot take. Hot take. Shot you, Hot. Don't, you don't need any talent to rap. Okay, and I'm, there calling you go. Up, I'm calling so, up Drake right now. Please, yeah, I got to. I'd love really to have rap? a discussion. No, he, he has really like rap. a hybrid, hybrid right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Really would, he, would he consider himself a rap artist? I would think so. Or is he an R and B? I don't know. We're we're like let's pro- figure this out. We're probably the wrong guys to be having this conversation. Probably. <laughs> hey, Whitey, shut up. <laughs> uh, okay, so Hamilton, because uh, it's modern, <laughs> although it is set in like the 1700s, so it's not really that modern. Well, modern music. Oh, okay. Modern yeah. rap. Modern, rap. Modern music. Because it's rap, you think this will work? I think so, yeah. And 75 million. You don't think that's a little high? No. Well, you, you got to get it or somebody else is going <laughs> to. You got to get there it. Probably You're, was talking a, a You're talking well, there about was Disney here. Well, I know bidding they have unlimited money. They, they, they now have quite a bit of my money because we just went to Disney World with my family. Yeah, a so, they can... so you're welcome, everybody. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I'm a big part of this Hamilton. I'm a producer. You helped fund yeah. it. You know, e- EP. Uh, but, you know, it's a, it's a now, smaller credit. In the article, I, I didn't see anything about Maybe I missed it. Is it just visual rights or is it the stage rights, too? So if, I, if they do another play, Disney's making the money. Well, it says that they're going to release a theatrical film version. That's all it says. It says they paid seventy-five okay. million for the rights. I'm guessing the rights to the, to film. I mean, yeah. yeah. I can't imagine they have the rights to the Broadway because that would be then a huge other piece of it if they got all the revenue and everything from the play into perpetuity. But uh, just even to have that, I mean, that's a lot of Disney Plus subscriptions, guys. I mean, I know that that's not the way you have to view this, but that's a lot of money. And let me ask you this: It says the article says that they're going to usher in a new boom of musical movies. I was also sitting there going. <laughs> I don't know that we're not. Yeah, there kind of already is a bunch of musical movies. Yeah, unless they're going to go with these modern musicals, which I think I think l- stuff like that. Modern, well, it is modern. You know, well, what other modern What's musicals the mo- are there? There's, there's a musical with a boy with a broken arm or something. It's like the newest. Oh, I, it's something Evan. I was going to say Evan Williams. That's a, a whiskey. That's not right. <laughs> That's what you want to drink. I'm while Evan you watch it. somebody. I think that is a movie. Evan Trimble. would work as well. We saw me and Lindsay went and saw one that was like the curious case of the boy and the dog at night or something like that. It had a weird name. Wow. It was kind of modern. It was about like autism and stuff. It was pretty good. That'd be a bad movie though. I should not do not make that. Like the lights are <laughs> like the lights of the production are a huge part of the like. Okay. It's very like visual and everything. Uh, probably not a great movie. Uh, okay, so a new era. Feel like this would this will be a hit though if they do this. People will like this. Evan Hansen. That's the name of it. What are you talking about? The musical that I just talked about. Did you see it? No. So you're just well, I've seen it, parts of it. Okay, Evan Hansen. I'm looking it up right now. Evan Hansen, Houston. So this is. Uh, well, we have to put Houston. Dear Evan. Well, I don't know, Dear what, Evan Hansen. That's yes. what popped up. Dear this Evan Hansen. Horrible. Let's that's what it is. Is this the worst pod we've ever done? Let's just move on. <laughs> Chris cannot. Well, Dick, I gotta get it right. Dick cannot it's handle it. me. All right, CBS News. We're taking a little bit of a turn here. There you go. CBSNews.com. Coronavirus. Which is a delicious beverage, I thought, but no, it's actually a deadly virus. Coronavirus could dent China box office for U.S. films. Uh, this is very tangentially related to movies. Seems like a little bit insensitive, maybe. I don't know. I wanted to. Put, I wanted to bring this out here because they're well, talking I about learned, the effect of the coronavirus on the box office. Well, I learned a little bit about how box office movies or movies are being sent to China, and what's interesting that is if they don't, they have they give them a window, and if they don't meet that window, then they're never going to get those movies. Ever like they won't they won't wait till the virus is slowed down like oh now we can finally release Fast and Furious Nine, 
Oh, really? Like they won't. You missed it. You're sorry. Like you're gonna get on DVD. Well, that's where stop the, having outbreaks. That's where the article contradicts itself because it goes, it's bat, it's blasting the virus all the way down, and then they're like, well, but maybe when the theaters open back up, maybe the the movies will be the biggest they've ever been ever because of the demand. <laughs> it's <laughs> like, what's the point of this article? So it'll just make it up. Well, the yeah, end. no, the real the underlining thing that they don't talk about is I wonder how many pirated copies are saved because it didn't air in China. Oh, because they can't film it? Yeah, they can't film it. They can't, they're not sending it over to them. It's true. So, well, hey, Mulan is pissed because they think that about $85 million in international ticket sales could be on hold. Plus, you got to imagine Mulan in China is going to be pretty huge. It's like, this is like, this is their movie, you know? Why is that? Well, because she's Asian. Okay. I'm just, I mean, it's, I'm not trying to be racist. <laughs> I just feel like when people make movies about specific places, those places sure. like the movie. Uh, Coronavirus seems like the article's a little insensitive to the fact that like people are dying. Uh, yeah, yeah. But oh, Lindsay no, said no. People are losing money. <laughs> yeah, more important. <laughs> That's the important more, thing. More importantly, you think the, why don't the studios some bad Corona jokes though, invest some them. money into helping find a vaccination for this, and oh. then they can get their patrons well again, or to go to the movies, or just send a, a screenwriter over there and just document everything and make a movie of it. I saw there another. I saw another article that was like how the movie Contagion could help us deal with the coronavirus. I was like, I don't think so. I'm not going to trust contagion for like my literal virus prevention uh, things like that. Um, anyways, uh, oh, I did. Lindsay sent me a funny uh, thing today that was like, Eminem is the first American to get the coronavirus. His symptoms included uh, arms heavy, his knees are weak, his arms were you know vomiting on it. There was vomiting on it. Anyways, <laughs> I is that, that was, a rap song? That is the lose yourself lyrics. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Is yeah. that a rap song? Give me a break. Again, very very talented lyrics. Yeah, it had to be. Hey, he freestyled that against oh. Rabbit or whatever in the bottom of a Detroit in a movie. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's considered a musical, right? <laughs> yeah, that's a modern music. It's very modern. Yes, it's very modern. Uh, anyways, all right, let's go to break. Uh, we're gonna come back. We're gonna talk about the movies we've seen. I've got two. I'm gonna talk about one pretty quick, and then the other one a little more detail. Uncut Gems and Parasite. Dick. Underground Six or Six Underground. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, get the title right on the break. Chris, Doctor Sleep. All right, stick with us here on the Ticket Stub. This is not a drill. The Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service has been dedicated to educating Texans for over a century. In 1915, the Extension Program was established under the federal Smith-Lever Act to deliver university knowledge and agricultural research findings directly to the people. Ever since, AgriLife Extension Programs have addressed the emerging issues of the day, serving diverse populations across the state. Texans turn to Extension for solutions in horticulture, agriculture, 4-H and youth, and family and consumer sciences. Extension agents respond not only with answers, but also with resources and services that result in significant returns on investment to boost the economy. Join us Fridays at 1 o'clock for the AgriLife Extension Hour. The Ticket Stub is sponsored by the Grand Theater and Amstar Cinema. With 18 locations around the country, the Grand Theater and Amstar Cinemas bring you the latest in state-of-the-art projection and sound. Including Fathom Events and Flashback Cinema. Did you know your local Grand or Amstar Cinema serves a wide variety of adult beverages? And some even have a full bar. And moms, they didn't forget about you. They also have a large selection of wine to help you get through those kids' movies. Visit your local Grand or Amstar Cinema today. Let's begin now. We're back on the ticket stub. If you missed this last segment, we talked about the coronavirus and how insensitive that virus is to affect global box office sales. Oh, and also people are dying, so that's not very good. Mm -mm. Uh, we also talked about Disney paying $75 million for Hamilton. Hard for me to believe. The other two guys thought it was a brilliant slam dunk. And then uh, Birds of Prey actually getting good reviews. What we're going to do now is we're going to rewind. This is where we talk about the movies that we have seen over the last week or since we were together last. I've got a couple. I'm going to do one, then let y'all go, and then I'll do my last one. First, I just want to talk for a minute about Uncut Gems. This is probably out of theaters by now. I, yes. I didn't check. Yeah. Yep. Uh, recently out of theaters, but it's Adam Sandler. It's where he's a New York jeweler, and he's basically a gambling addict and kind of moving from one... It's very stressful because the entire movie, he's trying to get paid on bets so that he can then pay for other bets. It's one of those type things. Like, mm -hmm. he's leaving one place. He just lies. He's going like, oh, I've got your ring in my hand right now, when he definitely doesn't. But 
let me say this. Adam Sandler's awesome in this movie. I think he's really, really good. I like the movie in general. I mean, I was very intense, very captivated. It's two hours and 15 minutes, but it feels like it goes pretty quick just because the pace is so relentless on everything. Um, and, you know, Sandler gets a lot of, you know, kind of weird or bad publicity in some ways for doing these murder mystery type Netflix movies and stuff like that. But this shows, I think, that he really can act and he really does have... Uh, you know, a lot of talent. I would like to see him go on a run where he starts to put two or three of these kind of movies together just because it was fun. I just liked it. It's been something that I got several friends who've seen it, and it's kind of a part of how we will like text and talk and joke and stuff like that. Some of the things that happen in the movie. It's nice to see him not on Netflix. Yeah. And he branched out. Well, he's the, coming back. He already signed like a ninety million dollar deal. Did he really with Netflix? Yeah, yeah he's gonna make like well, sixty four million. I think I don't remember what the number was. I would can't, almost Hamilton money. Can't fire store. Yeah, exactly. You could you could buy Hamilton and then have a little left over uh, to do that. Uh, so, anyways, Adam Sandler, thank you for this one. Even if it's the only uncut gem amidst, maybe this is a double entendre for his career that he has all these turds and then he has one uncut gem kind of. Well, he's. I think he's been known for saying that if he doesn't get recognition he's gonna make turd movies <laughs> i'm pretty sure that's what he said i don't know maybe he said what, what re- like what recognition so he was threatening mean? well like he's like he works he works really hard on the <laughs> oscar <laughs> bait bait movies and he doesn't get recognized for them like in the in the award ceremony so he's like you know what i'm more successful when i make movies that are turds well he definitely gets paid I mean, so. that's for sure i saw i heard an article where he's just like the most like low key celebrity, he just wears sweatsuits all the time and stuff, and doesn't really care about uh, you know being rich and famous and everything like that. like he doesn't want to talk to the p- the press and everything. But uncut gems, check it out if you get a chance on like VOD type thing. This would be a really good like stay at home, put it on the TV, you know, watch it in the you, this you don't not one you had to see in the theaters by any means. So anyway, Chris, what you got? I've got Doctor Sleep. This came out and you saw it. I saw it. So feel free to jump in I whenever will. you'd like. I'm going to take uh, over. This is 77% on RT. It stars Ewan McGregor, Rebecca Ferguson, who's from something, but I don't know where she's from, and Kylie Curran. So the plot is, years following the events of The Shining, a now adult Dan Torrance must protect a young girl with similar powers from a cult known as the True Knot, who prey on children with powers True to Knot's remain. True Knot's a bad, bad cult name. It is. It's yeah. terrible. So they can remain a normal normal. Immortal. I just made up a word. You see that? There's no, another word in here that I don't know how to pronounce, so this should be a, a fun journey. <laughs> Good. Rapid fire movie review. This is Barry Hertz, Globe and Mail. Whenever, what, it, which, wow, <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. whichever. That's the word I came. It's pronounce. not very rapid, right? <laughs> you just want to take a picture of what you're reading. Sure. and we'll Put it up. Yeah. <laughs> whichever route you prefer to take to the Overlook Hotel, there are better directions available than those prescribed by Doctor Sleep. Oh, Whoa. burn! George Elkins from the Metro Times. In place of what Doctor Sleep puts. It's condescending blind faith in. I sympathize with Jack and Dan or Danny. I'd rather cling to drink or ghosts. Oh. Okay. This one, this one doesn't make any sense. Charles Bramasco. Unlike the other two. Polygon, yes. <laughs> yeah. Flanagan chose to make Dr. Sleep utterly banal. Or banal. banal. I don't know. Is it just banal? Uh, ba- I don't think it's banal. <laughs> banal. I wish it was banal. <laughs> we make it a lot more interesting. I think banal means like boring. And anyway, like, that guy hated it too. But uh, <laughs> I wanted to see this movie so bad, but then I forgot about it oh. after it left theater. Oh, did you sleep on it? Oh, yeah, I slept. It on was it. kind of a sleeper pick. Yeah, I didn't really know what to expect because I didn't read the book Doctor Sleep. So all I well, knew is reads? only nerds read. Right. All I knew is that it was a sequel to one of my favorite horror movies, The Shining. So I was on board. Same. And the movie grabs you right away because it does flashbacks of Danny and his mother. Uh, after they left the Overlook Hotel. So you, you kind of get interested in that. Was there a part of you that wondered if this was like a dream or like a different set of people or anything at first right away? Or did you instantly know that it was supposed to be them? Well, that's what I'm saying. If ever there was a movie that should have deep fakes in it, yeah. it was this movie. Because you have actors playing, you know, Shelley Duvall, Jack Nicholson, and a, a couple other people. And it kind of took you out of yeah. the movie a little bit in that regard. But I think those guys, uh, they, they do a great job in all of the actors that are portraying, you know, the famous actors are really outstanding. But in short, the story is about like these witch type people who like to suck the life out of little kids who have the shining. They're steam. Yeah. So basically they're just chasing this little girl who apparently has the most glaring shine. So aren't we all right? <laughs> so the group, that was yeah, low key. The creepiest you thing go. you've ever said. <laughs> This little girl who has a lot of shine, aren't we all? 
the group of witch people, they <laughs> really they reminded me of carnies. They were kind of carnies. I mean, they're like they're like. dirty, they're gypsy like. And you and McGregor you and McGregor plays Danny. He's trying to help this little girl not get caught by these witch people. But speaking of you and Mewen McGregor. Mewen? Mewen. Mewen McGregor. Me. He is such an underrated actor. I mean, he, he really is. I don't is. know about that. I mean, he he's really pretty good. Yeah, like, but he doesn't get enough credit sometimes. I think they just throw him into movies. Oh, it's Ewan McGregor. Yay. You know, but. I, I, I would say he's probably not on most people's short list of like people that are really good. Right. You know, I, I think he's, he's, he's very no underrated. Leo. He's no Leo. That's yeah. right. I love how they use the music from the first movie. Yeah. You know that boom, 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 boom. Yeah, you know Wait, that song. Keep going. Yeah, there you go. that, that's it. That's only like is five Is that a minutes. rap song? Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, see how easy it is? It's so easy. It doesn't take any talent at all. Drop the beat. No, and there's so many scattered Easter eggs like from the first movie. If So if you've seen the first Shining, there's a lot that they put in there that it's that's subtle for you to enjoy. If you hadn't seen the first movie, this would be quite confusing. That, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So the final confrontation at the Overlook Hotel, it doesn't disappoint. And I was amazed at how they seem to use the original sets, even though it isn't the original that's sets. That's what I was about to, I was about to add that in. Yeah, yeah they they really did it, a good job. It looks it. fantastic. Um, all in all, I think fans of The Shining will really like this movie. If you haven't seen The Shining, there's no idea you're going to have any idea what's going on at all there is with no this. Idea that you're and you're probably going to hate this movie. But I think this is really a great adaptation in a genre that's hit or miss like Stephen King. Yeah. So. Yeah. So you liked it? Overall? I liked it. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. I liked it. It, it kind of scratched the itch a little bit. Like if you, you know, if you want a little more shining in your life, mm -hmm. it's not quite as good. It's not quite as, you know. And but, two and a half hours to hold my attention. That's something special. That's right. That's like two episodes of Watch Me Go Broke. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> All right, Dick, what would you watch? I watched Six Underground. Uh, Are we sure about the title? Yeah, I, I, I just double-checked. <laughs> okay, you got, the, you got the post. I was sure. right. I was right. Okay. Uh, it, the movie's on Netflix right now, so it's a Netflix-produced movie. Uh, it's directed by Michael Bay. It is two hours and eight minutes. Rated R for action, adventure, and comedy, and gore, and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, meet a new kind of action hero. Six untraceable agents, totally off the grid. They've buried their past so they can change the future. Wow. Uh, this, to me... That's deep. Uh, I, again, I, I enjoy the action. Michael Bay is really good at shooting movies and making it enjoyable. Uh, outside that, the you could tell the script originated from... You know, the poli sci class and undergraduates going like, why don't we just take out the, the leaders? Why don't we have the money... Why doesn't Bill Gates pay these people to go to take out these dictators and these people who perform these atrocities? Because that's kind of the base of the movie. They're making a plan to go kill this dictator who's been killing people and taking the money, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, outside that, the plot sounded simple. It seemed simple. They try to create more stuff about the actor, the main characters, but it just really wasn't there for me. Ryan Reynolds plays the lead role, and they're all all their names are numbers. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, right? And then it's and they each have like a kind of a like a power or something or like Well they a just have a specialty. specialty. Yeah. And it, again, it didn't really that didn't really resonate are with me. Are they the me. best? Are they, no, they're are just, they the best at what they do? Well, no, I think what it, it was best. is Ryan Reynolds plays this rich dude who they kind of said like, oh he made money from being smart and he made these patents and all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Everyone else had a specialty because they performed something and it was recognized by the underground. And <laughs> Ryan Reynolds came and basically go, hey, you know, let me help you achieve what you really want to achieve. And uh, again, it was just it, it it was a good movie. I think if you are watching it with friends, it's good to watch in the background. Some of the scenes are really cool and creative, not realistic at all. Uh, the first opening scene is like 28 minutes. Of them driving around yeah, that, in that, Venice, that, that's I think, what I, or I, wherever I, they were. That's all I watched was the first. Yeah, scene. like it doesn't stop, and then that's not even the movie. And I was kind of disappointed. I was like, "Why'd you waste all that screen time <laughs> to not really tell me anything besides they they like driving around in fancy cars and shooting people?" Like, well, these kind of movies have to have the big opening action sequence, right? I mean, it seems like these well, big is, action no, movies this was always long. Yeah, and they didn't give you any warning. It was like it just started. Like, is this the one that has the car chase and they go through the church or yeah. something? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and like it just it, there's no like it's like oh we got the jewel run and then it's running for 26 minutes and you're like okay well was that jewel nothing? It didn't do anything. It had nothing. It was it was over. Uh, but yeah, I would check it out if you enjoy Michael Bay movies. I enjoy Michael Bay movies, and it would be something on the bottom of the list of Michael Bay movies. <laughs> But it's still shot well, and it's exciting, so there's that. What was the last one he'd done before this? Had there been a little while? Had there been a little break in the bay? Uh, no, I think that his previous movie had to have been Transformers, I think. Let me double check. I'm checking right now for you guys. Michael Bay, uh, his previous movie from Six Underground 
was uh, he produced a bunch of stuff. Bumblebee, you know, uh, Tom Clancy's Jack Ryan. Man, he produced a lot of movies. Um, I'm not seeing really where he... Come on, directing. So yeah, Transformers. Was... Okay. Last night. Last night. Okay. So then, and then 13 Hours. 13 yeah. Hours was a good movie. But so. he got kind of he got kind of stuck in the Transformers train there for a while, where he's done like five of them now. Well, it's like those two brothers who do the Marvel movies. I mean, basically they're like, "Hey, here's a bunch of money. You yep. can do whatever you want to. Here's more money to pay for the movie." Also, the the best part is each Transformers got more Michael Bay. It's like he's like he's slowly eliminating the people who are telling him no, and so each one he can up up the stakes a little bit more. Well, one thing I really enjoy about Michael Bay is he's very smart with his visual effects. Yeah. And he has a lot of them. He has a lot of them, and they're very heavy. And like, I think that's a very rare talent in the 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 end game of maybe movie making because you can tell movies didn't spend enough time on certain things, and they didn't keep it tight, and they didn't. I don't if that makes sense. Like, you know, there was a lot of producers involved. Like every time I see a Michael Bay movie, I know I can like I feel like he's making the key decision of how to do each scene. This is how it's going to move. This is how it's going to explode. And those kind of things. Or he has a strong team with him in every movie. He doesn't just hire random people per movie. He has a good team working on it. Because one, like uh, I was reading some interesting things about him back in the day, and that well, I found a lot of respect. He did all the accounting with his team on how much it costs to make the explosions and things like that. Hmm. So when he gets a budget, he knows how to to set up a scene because he knows how much money it costs per scene, and he probably spent his entire budget on the beginning and end of this movie uh, because it's just ridiculous. But then again, Netflix just probably just threw a bunch of money and he probably had a you know blank check. And, 75 million, something like that. So, uh, yeah, I wonder how much money... It should be interesting to see how much money this movie costs because... A lot of times they'll tell you on IMDb. You can tell they spent a lot of money, but they did not get what... Netflix is probably a little disappointed because he has such great, good actors in it, but at the end, it just didn't produce a really great movie. It was just kind of fun. Budget is estimated $150 million. I believe it. $150 million. So. It's, hard, it's hard for Netflix to quantify how they ever get their money back, but they just keep spending. It does, they have unlimited funds, so it doesn't matter. Or, I saw well, they're making a lot of cash per month. Yeah, they got good positive cash flow yeah. is what they would say in the biz, right, guys? Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know business. At least they're not like Disney doing like sex trafficking and stuff like that. That's well, how they make their real money. Is that where the real money's yeah, at? That's the I think the real theory. money's at like a bottle of water. What do you like think? $7. What do you think Disney World's all about, man? <laughs> They're trying to find that shine. Yeah, fantasy land. They're trying yeah. to find that shine. What fantasy are you talking about? Uh, 2019, the other movie I saw was Parasite. This is up for Best Picture. It's actually up for several Academy Awards. This is a movie filmed in or set in South Korea by Bong Joon-ho. So he is a famous director. Uh, no. Well, that's, well, at least it's not Chris trying to pronounce it. Yeah. Well, so he did uh, He did a couple things that are that are pretty well known, I would say. He did that Okja which is the one Netflix with the, movie Netflix where they gave him 150 million? Yeah, with the Super Pigs, and then he did Snowpiercer, which is where they were all on the train, and it had Chris Evans, and uh, he's done some other things since then as well. But those are probably the two most notable things that Bong Joon Ho, -Ho has done. And then now Parasite is probably his best work, in my opinion. So uh, what this movie is about is it's a uh, family. They're all unemployed. They're very poor. They live in South Korea, and they take a they take a peculiar interest in a wealthy and glamorous family named the Parks. And they slowly integrate themselves into their lives and they get entangled in an unexpected incident. So what you find out pretty quickly is they, they, none of them have jobs, none of them can work, they have a terrible life. There's this rich family that lives in this really great house and their tutor goes to America to study abroad. Well, the tutor's best friends with this family's son. So that they, so he gets recommended and kind of has to lie about who he is to be able qualified to be the tutor. Uh, and from there, they find opportunities to get their family to slowly start working for this rich family. And, uh, and things kind of unfold. I feel like it's a real story. But then it, then it gets twisted. Yeah, things unfold from there, and they definitely take a, a twist, and, and they're having to kind of juggle all these different lies because the family doesn't know they're all related because uh, they wouldn't probably hire them if they knew they were. Uh, but this is a really, really well-done movie, really good. Uh, you, I mean, you're reading subtitles the whole time, but it's not super distracting. You're still able to definitely follow and keep up with what's going on. I think it's really creative, some of the choices that they make. Uh, and then my, my only – and I don't know how else – you would land the plane with this movie without saying too much. But at the end, I feel like it it maybe left, I don't know, a little something to be desired for me. That would be my one criticism of this, is at the end. Uh, it, it's an interesting movie because there are parts of it that are funny and then parts of it that are ex extremely graphic. And the audience that we were watching it in, 
didn't always know, I don't think, when to react to which <laughs> emotion. Because there'd be moments that were funny that people wouldn't laugh. And then something that's absolutely horrific. And people would be like, oh! <laughs> it's like, you know, we're going like, what? Are, you, are y'all crazy? It is 99% on Rotten Tomatoes. Well, there you go. On RT, as Chris likes that, to say. Yeah. yeah, 99%. So very well done. Uh, you know, I think this will probably... I bet this will get a, an award or two. Uh, I don't think it's going to sweep. That's what I, yeah. I picked it a yeah, couple We talked times. about this on the next segment. I don't think it's going to sweep the Oscars, which is a perfect lead-in yeah. uh, to our next segment, which is, which is Oscar ballot talk. So what we want to let everybody know, in case you're somebody new, is that over the last couple of years, now Chris thought we'd been on the air for like seven years, but we've only been on for like three years. But every year that we've been on the air, sorry, Chris, do you want to yeah, respond I'd, to that? I, it, well, I was proven incorrect. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, facts, you know, facts are hard <laughs> to argue with. Uh, but we've done an Oscar ballot competition. So Chris introduced us to the Golden Dude, which is a little trophy of a, a dude who is made of gold. About nine inches. Yeah, it's about a nine. It's about a golden nine incher. And uh, what we do is we each pick the Oscar ballots. We each have a sheet. Can they see this? We each have they a sheet like it. this, and it has all the different categories. And don't cheat and read mine. And uh, we we make our picks, and then we don't lock cheat them. Cheat and read yours. Well, if the audience wants to play along, that's what I was about to get to. They just saw my. I answer. don't think you're that guy in class that they want to cheat off of. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I forgot to, I forgot to even do a category. So there we go. That's a good start. Uh, so we're going to lock these in the Lone Star Studio Vault, which yeah. is the safest place in Conroe, I believe. It is. Uh, yeah. Well, Studio B, yeah. Yeah, and so we're going to leave those there. And then after the Oscars, we'll tabulate and uh, we'll declare a winner. The winner will get the Golden Dude for an entire year until, or until we do the Golden Globes, I guess, right? Because it's this week. Well, we missed the it, Golden Globes this year. We didn't do it is for it this, us. Is it this It is this, this week, Sunday, right? Yeah, yeah. Sunday. This Sunday, yeah. Is there something like a leap year they change stuff? I feel like they changed it. Is it always the second? Is it always the second Sunday? It feels it's the feels first. Li- feels later. It Sunday. feels earlier than usual, in yeah. my opinion. It's I usually around the 14th. No, I think it's. Is that, I guess that's. It is a leap year, but I don't think that's affecting the No, Oscar. it's before. Because well, the Super Bowl's was no, last weekend. Yeah, because the Daytona 500 has been on the same day as the Oscars. Just a little trivia for you there. Is, is, is that the, on purpose? What is the Daytona 500? It is the f- next weekend. So it is early. Not this weekend, next weekend. So it is early. We've cracked, cracked it. We've, I got a check. I hope it was not this weekend. The case. We've look. cracked the case. All right. So what we're going to do tonight. Do we really know when the Oscars is? Can we get it? Yeah, a... it's this Sunday, but I'm looking for the Daytona 500. <laughs> the Daytona, now, uh, totally unrelated. The Daytona 500 is a... Uh, well, speaking of the okay. racing, we got Ford for Ferrari with like two nominations. It's actually Ford v. Ferrari. Oh, whatever. It's the 16th, just in case anybody cares. Which sounds like more when the Oscars typically have been. Okay, Ford vs. Ferrari racing movie. has. Uh, is it only two? Is it only up for two things? I think so. Okay, well, it's up for a couple different things. Let's go for a couple categories. We'll talk about them. Christian say. Bale's really pissed off because he does like one movie a year, and that was his movie this year. Yeah, it was a good movie, and he was good in it. Also, audience, if you want to participate, if you want to do a ballot, send us a picture of the fact that you did the ballot to our. You can direct message us on Twitter at the underscore yeah. ticket stub. If you don't direct, you won't message win the us, dude though. You're not. Well, up yeah, zero percent chance so you get the dude. But we'll give you a shout out on air if you if you participate, whether you beat us or not. But if you just like. After the fact, send us a ballot. We're you not win gonna... tickets to the Grand. There we go. You'll get tickets to the Grand Theater. Um, and Amstar, and... anywhere. And Amstar Cinema. Yeah. Okay, anything else to interrupt an ad? Or well, the... make sure they know. If they're, if they're listening outside of Conroe, they can go to the Grand if they live near a Grand. Grand or Grand or Amstar, Amstar, yeah. or whatever. go to Facebook Marketplace, sell them on there. <laughs> make that money. Okay, so let's talk about Best Picture. There's nine categ- or nine nominations ever since they expanded a few years back from five to ten, up to ten. They've got nine this year. Uh, what of these have y'all seen? Y'all said y'all each have only seen one of the nine available, right? Well, no, I saw Parasite. I forgot that that was Oh, was you did see Parasite. Yeah, Why didn't you say a word? I just did a whole thing about it. I, was li- I like to let you talk. Oh, that's, I don't like to let y'all talk if I've seen it. I like to jump in and take over. Well, I, I didn't want to say that movie sucked. Did you not like it? It was okay. Oh, you just thought it was okay? So you've yeah. seen Parasite and Joker... Chris, you've just seen Joker? Just Joker, yeah. Okay, any hopes to see anything else before it actually happens? You're, I mean, no. You're, you're picking blind here. No. Well, I've seen Ford v. Ferrari, Joker, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Parasite. I'm going to try to see Marriage Story and maybe 1917 uh, before it all is said and done. But it, what are these movies? I mean, you know, I, without giving it away, does it seem like a couple of these? Do any of them seem like they shouldn't be Best Picture nominations in your opinion? I would probably say JoJo. Yeah, I didn't see and it. Little Women. Little Women, definitely. You sexist pig. They make you it every few years. Pigs. They make that movie every few years. What was the last time they made Little Women? Well, a few years ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a few years. But this one's got... Well, see, I, I the, think, the, the thing well, about this one is it's got Greta Gerwig, think, and she's well, like the darling right the, now. The, pr- the trouble with making a movie like that, especially when it's based off of, of a, a book, and it's been done so many times, it's hard to create something so unique for that year in the race for an Oscar... 
unless it's just the best movie you ever made. 1994. Yeah, it's a few years. So, but you understand what I'm saying? When you have a movie that's already you, you reflect on other created works, it's kind of like when you're voting for the Oscars, you're like, oh, it was, a, it was good. 1949. But it's not going to be the great one where you put number one on the vote. Yeah, like it, it's going to be. That's it, true. So 20, that's 2018. They, they did one it, in 2018. They made a little a real movie. I think yeah, it was made for TV in the probably. theaters with Leah Thompson. Yeah, 1933. Yeah, they make this. Yeah, this. Look at that. But that's nineteen eighteen. That's the struggle when you make movies like that, and then you want to win an then. Oscar because you're, you're everyone's going to be thinking about the previous one made if it was better. That's great, but it's not going to be enough to where you push to that number one vote when you're voting for the Oscars. That's why I was like, that's why I don't think it needs to be there because, I mean, think about like JoJo. I, that looks really interesting. It's very unique, but when you're comparing it to other movies, you're like, man, I don't really know. I understand how at the Oscar label, like, they got up there. But then again, they have nine people now, nine movies. Like, I don't think those two movies would have made top five. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think the thing Little Women has going for it is it's got the Greta Gerwig, Shersha Ronan tag yeah. team. And they're like, you know, the last th- two years before this, they've been tops of the Oscars with Lady Bird. And then, uh, oh, shoot, what was the, what was the other one? Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. But so they're, you know, I think sometimes the names kind of get you as much as... Uh, well, as I don't know how... The, the, the way they vote for this stuff is so bizarre to me. Yeah. But, again, I don't see it being... Like, if you went to the Vegas numbers, I think it's going to be... Those two movies are going to be pretty low. Okay. I think now... The reason they do the nine, I think the reason they do that is to promote film. Yeah. It's like, hey, I was nominated for Best Picture. That means it's you should go see it and buy it. Yeah, I'll buy that. And also, I think it's to... Uh, well, yeah, I mean, same thing. Just to get to make the studios happier, to get more publicity, to get you know everything else. At least this lineup is stronger than last year's lineup. I'll say that this lineup to me is pretty strong. No, for the ones that I've seen, and then from what I've heard about the others, like Ford vs Ferrari, that was a good movie. I'm I'm, I'm a little surprised it's up for Best Picture, but it was a really good movie. I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, really good. Parasite, really good. Uh, Joker, I, honestly, Joker is probably the one. That of the of that I've seen that I like the least out of the one, out of the four at least that I've seen. When according to Rotten Tomatoes, that would be accurate. It's the lowest. What are you, the Rotten Tomatoes? Well, like, it's, it's for some reason this ballot. I know, has but, it. I know, but every movie we've mentioned, he's like, oh, and according to the Rotten Tomatoes. Well, yeah. who do you think's gonna win? How about that for Best Picture? For the big, for all the money. Are we all selected? We're all locked in. Yeah, I'm locked. I'm in. locked in. I think 1917. I agree. Same. Okay, so we're all in the same mm. one there. Yeah, and, and I think that that's not a real creative pick either. I think that's kind of a consensus pick for a lot of people was yeah. 1917 and i have that's what that's one of the reasons i want to see it before it happens i want you know i want to see what it's all about i've heard a lot about it the single shot you know the whole you know no cuts even though there are cuts for the whole you know point of view type thing and it's supposed to be pretty intense also at least at some different times so uh you know anyways and that goes down to directing uh, i think that sam mendez has a really good shot at best director as well me too. Just because I think that's you know part. Actually, of I did uh, the I did Bong Joon Ho as yeah. best director. Well, maybe so. I, I mean, that was a really well made movie for that's sure. Parasite was. Um, anyways, is there any you know? Let's talk about some of these categories that we don't know anything about. Well, the animated feature one, that's going to be an interesting one because of how diverse the production companies are on that list. Yeah. Because I think Disney has one or it has two, and then like I it was it was missing Link Disney. No, that was DreamWorks. Well, and how, Train Your Dragon was DreamWorks, yeah. right? Okay, so well, I mean, like, it's not, it's, not, it's not all Disney. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah, and then you. they're all like some of them are original. So, would you have two on there that are sequels, and then three of them are completely yeah. original stuff? Well, Claus is a sequel so. to Santa in general. Just oh, the Santa yeah, Claus, just with the Tim idea Allen. of Santa Claus. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm telling you, Claus not that good. If y'all picked that, I apologize. Well, I you. picked that. I okay. picked it. Oh. Well, maybe it'll it'll probably win, but I thought it was stupid, so that's my two cents. Well, I look at the other movies. <laughs> well, Toy Story Four. I don't know. I put I went Toy Story Four just for the pedigree. You know, it, I, I didn't see Toy Story Four. Well, anymore. I lost my body on Rotten Tomatoes. It's the highest rated of all those. <laughs> don't know what uh, is it? Toy Story Four is. My yeah, mistake. you fool. My mistake. They can't give Toy Story anything worse than like ninety seven. That's like the very that's the basement. Mm. So that means this movie actually sucks if it's only ninety seven percent. It's Toy Story. Which is interesting to me though. Like there's certain. The, the lower known categories like makeup, production design, and stuff, they always throw in like random movies that take slots of movies that are up for best picture. And to me, it's kind of weird. Like, when you're best picture to me, that means you have a really good hand yeah. in like the poker game. Like, you, you can do a lot of good things. You have the variety. Like, for example, makeup and hairstyling has Maleficent with Mistress of Evil. That's the sequel, by the way, not the original. And, and I just think this is how they. 
This is how they throw a bone. To well, some like, of these other type why of wouldn't Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? I imagine that a great hair and makeup. Yeah, right? I mean, it got costume design, which is probably, it was well, probably, I mean, it's probably better getting, in that If you're regard. getting costume design, there's a good chance you had good hair and makeup, too. Yeah, although it's it's not a huge amount of overlap between the two categories. I mean, it's Joker and Jude. No, that's it. Yeah. Joker's the only one and that Judy. goes across both. No, Judy's only in hair and makeup. It's not in costume design. Oh, okay, sorry. I'm saying Joker's the only one that goes both that, that goes both ways. So, kind of like Chris. No, just kidding. Uh <laughs> Wait, no, does that make sense? It's, it's, strange, it's strange to me they throw in movies like that, <laughs> and, and it's kind of like that's just – I, I really don't get how they put together the list when people are voting and they go, okay. Like the uh, like the visual effects one's always fun because it's usually the big blockbuster movies that get yeah. put into that one. Yeah. And then you don't really know who's going like, – you don't know who's going to win because you don't really know how much – who vo- everyone votes for that, so who cares? Well, and I think that one of the things that they've proven over time is that the people who vote for these have not necessarily seen the movies themselves. Like, you know, that's which, always a talk every year where they're. Which to me is kind of ridiculous. Like, you should be forced if you're going to vote for something. Well, I think, oh, definitely. Isn't that how it works? Is if you're in, if you're when you join the academy, you have like a subcategory for your app membership, and that's what you do. So yeah. if I'm a makeup artist, I get to vote. Everyone who's a makeup artist votes just on makeup artists, right? Something. It's like not that. like I like I'm a producer. And I get to vote on every single I one. I think because everyone vote vote votes on for everything. Best picture. Everyone votes on best picture, but like the directors only vote on. Is that how it works? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't uh, think so. I, I don't know if that's how it works or not. Honestly, I have no idea. Well, it, the, the categories that to me, I always when we do this every year. I have no idea how to pick things like uh, you know uh, sound mixing. Like and explain to me what the difference between sound editing and sound mixing is. I, I don't fully know what that even means. Sound editing, you put the sounds that you've already recorded together, and sound mixing is like making the sound. Yeah, so like if we're doing a war scene, we expect the sounds of war to be louder than me talking to you. So if you if your talking is louder than the sounds yeah, of war, so that's you're bad like, sound Ugh. mixing. <laughs> so well, that's the mixing. That's what it is. I know, but like, how is like? It just seems like. I don't know. I mean, I guess that's a big deal. I guess how you mix it. Makes I mean, have you seen Star Wars? Yeah. Like, imagine their mixing department. They're like, oh, golly, I got to figure out which louder. Is this X-Wing louder than this laser? I, it just I seems mean, like a very nitpicky thing to have an entire Oscar should... category for. Well, I think that, well, I think really there's two sides to doing the movie is the acting, acting side, and then it's actually producing, the like, making the movie. Yeah. Because, you know, special effects is a huge deal, especially making a big blockbuster, making everything work, because... If anyone had any idea, I love those example movies where how much blue screen was used and how much, you know, CGI post stuff was used to do the makeup and do... Because I remember one time I got really pissed off at the Oscars when Master and Commander won Best Cinematography, and I think like three-fourths of that movie was made on a green screen. Really? So when they did all the naval ship battles and stuff, it was all CGI. And I'm like, I guess you had to have a cinematographer there to tell them this is how the camera is going to be moving. But when you have that much flexibility in editing the movie where you can add certain lights and stuff like that, you're controlling that. Yeah. It's kind of like people who do you know, film photography and digital photography posts because a lot of people, you know, there's more of an art to film photography because you got to get it right. But if you do digital, you can go into Photoshop and change everything. But that's one thing I was like, oh, it's kind of like that's – to me that's difficult to tell people, oh, that's a great cinematography movie when three-fourths of that movie is just – someone's creating on a computer not like getting on a camera on a jib which is a skill down. of its own to do it on the computer too yeah I mean, that, that's an impressive skill and then there's always the shorts like documentary short subject <laughs> how many of those well have you seen, do you guys? think that's something that the industry <laughs> put in because it's more of a, a business car resume thing oh 100 because I mean, like you know no one the average person doesn't care but if i want a short story i might get a job later that's why i'm going to spend my time in making a really good short story yeah, I mean, I think, you know, when you look at, like, especially directors and stuff, their first ten things are all these shorts. You know, it's all shorts that they try to get acclaim for to help con- well, convince people to give them money like, for feature. Do you remember when they, they did those, like, New York, I Love You, Paris, I Love You, and then they made, like, Berlin, I Love You? You ever seen, the, you ever seen those movies where no. it's, like, famous directors got together, like, 12 directors, and they did a short that was about Berlin. But it was, like, love stories in Berlin. Mm-hmm. And they had big actors and actresses in mm. it. But I was like, I wonder if those shorts could be eligible for the shorts. Because it's a whole movie. When you go to the theater, you're watching all of them. But it's like oh, okay. they're standalone. They don't yeah. connect. I don't know what the rules are, but, but I've never were nominated. So I guess I've almost never seen any of them. Sometimes the animated short film, if it's like at the front of a Pixar movie, I've seen that, and that's about the only opportunity I have. Well, I know Alamo Drafthouse does the annual like you get to watch all the shorts. All the shorts. And yeah. I've done that a couple times, which is fun. Uh, I think living in a city like Austin, that's where you take advantage of that kind of stuff. 
but I mean, there's no other way to watch it unless you can watch them online. Yeah. Well, the Oscars are coming up this Sunday. Oscar ballot contest. We each have our ballots. We're going to lock them in the Lone Star Vault, safest place in Conroe. Have them stored there so well, no one tell them. Well, they don't know where the vault is. They don't know where the vault is. It's it's secret. You have to move. They can't get to it, even if they could. If if they did, yeah, you have to. You have to believe. Yeah, it's it's in the cloud. It's in the cloud. And uh, we'll we'll next show we'll come back together. We'll count the tabulate the votes and see who wins. So we'll be back here next Thursday. Yeah, next Thursday. That's exciting. Any movies y'all want are gonna try to see between now and then? I'm gonna try to see that 1917 movie. Same 1917 and Marriage Story. Those are the two I want to see before. I'm afraid to watch that because that's something that totally Holly like. Oh, let's watch it together. I'm like, it's about it. And then you get in a huge fight. Yeah, I'm like, I'm not watching that. <laughs> She's like, I can't believe him. He's so rude. And you're like, well, actually, he makes some valid points. I, I mean, really we, have to, we have to look at this, like, logically, Holly. Yeah, actually. He's you know, a jerk. Yeah, he's a jerk. Well, you know, I think he had a couple good points in there. You loser. Uh, anyways, well, we love all you guys. Thanks for listening. And uh, if you want to do the Oscar ballot contest, like I said, just direct message us on Twitter at the underscores ticket yeah. stub with a picture of your ballot. And you can win some tickets to the Grand Theater. Other than that, my name is Connor for Chris for Dick signing off on the ticket stub.